Hello, I'm Tamarinda Rich. Today's video is about if you're planning a trip to Costa Rica, what you should be thinking about, sort of things to take into consideration. Such an amazing country, the people are amazing, beaches are incredible, jungles are great, so much wildlife, um, so many things to think about and do. First thing I think about is, is what, what do you want to get out of the trip because there are so many different possibilities here. You know, if you want a beach holiday, there are just endless miles of gorgeous golden white sand. If you wanted to go and work on a cattle ranch in the middle of the country, you could do that. You know, if you wanted a cultural experience, you know, living with the locals, that might be a good idea. You could volunteer, um, save the monkeys, go spend some time on a coffee plantation, chop coffee down and pick it and roast it and uh, learn all about that process. Make pottery um, using the old, old style way of doing things. Then you've got the volcanoes and the rainforest and the deep sea fishing and all sorts of things. So there's just so many things to think about. You just need to pick two or three and you could probably mix in a few different things in here, but just figure out what kind of holiday you want. Don't try and do too much, but within all those things and then figure out what you want to do and then you can see on a map whereabouts in the country do it and then start to sort of figure out a, a routine. There are two international airports, uh, Liberia, which is LIR, and the San Jose Airport, which is SJO, so Juan Santa Maria, after the most famous Costa Rican uh, fended off William Walker. Neither Liberia nor San Jose have really anything to keep you there. They just have big airports. So I would get out of them as soon as you can. If you're, if you're stuck with an extra half day, you can do a, a sort of a guided tour around San Jose and there are some mildly interesting things to do. But if, if I were you, if you get in at any sensible time of the day, get the hell out um, to your first destination. And so you're waking up in the morning in somewhere you want to be, rather than wake up in the morning in a, in a dreary airport hotel. One of the greatest attributes of this country are the friendly and welcoming locals. There's absolutely no animosity at all towards foreigners here. Most of them are very curious, very friendly, would like to hear your story and you can really make some great friends here. So take your time and plan into your day. Just stop and talk to the people and find out about their lives and tell them about yours and that will really enrich your experience. Now also there are people here that are going to take advantage of you and try and make money out of you and you just need to Keep that balance of being very open and very willing to you know, take a risk and meet new people and do the thing, but just be on the lookout. There are some people that just try to hang around tourist areas because they're trying to you know, make a buck here and there. One story just springs to mind. Uh, we have Watchy Man here who will look after your car, so you park the car by the, road, by the road, there'll be a little old man in a fluorescent jacket with a stick and he'll come and he'll go, you know, I'll watch it for you. And the, the idea there is that they're protecting the car for you. Well, when you come back, give him $1 or $2 and he's going to be over the moon and say thanks very much and you're fine. Um, but I heard a story um, a couple of days ago. One of my friends came to me who parked in a car park where I know the watching man. He's a great guy and he's been there for years. And this guy went to them when they first parked and charged $20 to look after the car and they paid it and then left and he wasn't a watchy man at all he was just some guy that had just asked for some money and then he left and then when they came back to get the car my little man with his stick and his fluorescent jacket asked for his two dollars and they're like no no we already paid the other guy 20. so they were upset and it would it was just you know no one's say affected their trip but you know it was just one of the kind of a negative expert so i just sort of say in general they're amazingly friendly go for it make some new friends uh, but just bring your smarts along. The wildlife in Costa Rica is fantastic. Um, there are just so many animals to see and you don't really have to make that much of an effort. I mean, I, 
I very rarely move from my nice little town where I live, but I'm very happy here. But yeah, I just think what I've seen in the last month or so, you know, sloths, I see monkeys every day, I've seen humpback whales, sharks, turtles, iguanas every day, mapaches every day. There are just so many things to see. Uh, now you can go on these planned trips, so depending on the season, they'll be offering tours to certain beaches to see turtles. And it's very well run. The, you know, they, they're very careful over the well-being of the animals, so the guides that take you have to be certified. They'll charge you, I don't know, 30 bucks a person or something like that. And you'll go to a beach and they'll come along with a little flashlight, tell you where to sit at night time. And you'll sit in the dark for a couple of hours and then you'll see these amazing prehistoric turtles come up and lay their eggs and whatever. It's a really enriching experience. Um, same thing if you're in the rainforest in Monteverde, you can go on a, a guided trip and see a lot of animals. And it's really worthwhile, you should. Always ask the guide, how many did you see yesterday? Because, you know, they're wild animals, so, you know, there might be just a lot around at that particular time, or it might be egg-laying season, but just, just ask them. And so at least you're sort of matching your expectation with, you know, the reality of what you're going to see. One thing I'd say, stay quiet, right? It's not like Disneyland or a zoo where they're, they're there and they're performing for you. You know, this, this is the wildlife, and, you know, they react to the noises. So, you know, if you're there and completely silent, you're standing much more chance to see them than if you sort of ooing and ahhing, you know, at the first hint of something, because they're gonna, they're gonna go. So uh, that would be my suggestion. Car rental. You're probably going to rent a car while you're here. That's the best way to get around, most economical, gives you the most flexibility and uh, the best way you're gonna really enrich your experience here. Most of the car hire companies are actually pretty honest. I mean, I've rented cars a lot in Spain and they just try and skin you alive or whatever they can. But here they gen generally tend to be pretty reasonable. If you bring your car back late, they're gonna charge you. Even if it's 10 minutes, they're gonna charge you for an extra half day or whatever. So, you know, it's sort of normal like that. Uh, check out the collision damage waiver thing if you're trying to put it on your American Express card. Just make sure that the agency accepts your card and if you've got to print out your policy, you've done that ahead of time. You can usually drop them off in a different destination for a charge uh, from where you picked it up. And that works well because most places you go to, you're going to need the car. But for example, if you end up on a beach, say in Tamarindo or Hako or something, you really don't need the car to get around the normal things there. So, you know, if you're planning three or four nights, say, you might want to come drop your car off the first day and then just spend a few days lounging around, not doing much, discovering the local town, and that'll save you a few bucks on the rental. My recommendation will be to pack lightly. All you need really is a carry-on bag. Nobody's really dressing up for dinner every evening. The weather's pretty much the same every day, so you don't need lots of sweaters and jackets and things like that. You don't need lots of jewelry here you know it's better to be understated and quiet you don't want to have expensive jewelry so if you leave your car for lunch you're worried about the car or if you leave things in your hotel room and the safes often don't work in the rooms so don't just don't be worried about that kind of thing just leave, leave that at home bring your flip-flops not one nice pair of shoes wait when you get down here and it's hot 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 every day so just think about bringing light materials and that will really help which brings me nice on to my next point be careful of petty theft if you leave things in your car visible there's a good chance they're going to get swiped there's very little violent crime but there's a lot of opportunistic crime so you know if you're going for lunch and you've got all your bags and all your worldly belongings make sure they're hidden away try and park your car close to where the restaurant is or if there's a watchy man make sure there's a watchy man on there um, because they they will get in and you'll come back to your car and you'll go, how on earth did they get in because there won't be any signs of it at all and i don't know whether they've got a generic key or whether they've got a little thing but um, just be careful of that same thing on the beach you know, if you're going for a swim and leaving your stuff, you know, make sure you're, you're keeping an eye on it or you leave someone sitting with it because that, that can be a problem. Same thing with you walking down crowded streets, you know, make sure your wallet and your phones are well tucked away because that kind of petty crime does happen and you should be aware of it. So this is a small country that takes forever to get around. So you should look at doing these little puddle jumper flights. Uh, the national airline for these small 12-seaters is called SANSA, S-A-N-S-A. -S -S -A. 
And that's fantastic. You can buy a package of, of tickets for not much. I mean, for example, Tamarindo San Jose, it's four and a half, five hours drive or 30 minutes flight. And often you get flights for under $100. And they're great, you know, it's really interesting watching, you know, watching the country beneath you. Uh, really convenient and, and really good idea. So if you're planning on zipping around to lots of different places, that might be an option that, that you only drive a part of it and then you take these, these short flights. Um, that's a really, really good tip. Okay, I'm a really big fan of using Airbnbs or these small local hotels. In Costa Rica, you've got some, all the major chains here with some breathtaking, breathtaking hotels. But honestly, when you, after you stay there for five days, you can't remember if you're in Costa Rica or Mexico or whatever, because you're not really getting any sense of the local flavor in these big hotels. So, you know, it is nice and I've done it and it's great, but it's not really Costa Rica. And I'd say there are so many amazing things here related to the local culture, the people and everything else I've just talked about, that I think it'd be a real shame if you came here and just squirreled yourself away in a, in a, in a luxury hotel. One other thing I'd, I'd say is if you're looking for a beach, because most people would plan the do, tour, do the thing, and then plan to end up on a beach for a few days. And that's, that's a really smart move. And there are probably 10 great beaches in the country, but everyone is completely different to the next. You know, some are good surfing beaches, some aren't, some have white sand beaches, some have sort of dark volcanic sand, some you don't need a car and you've got like a real center of, um, you know, restaurants and everything going on and nightlife and, and whatever. And others, you just have a gorgeous beach and then absolutely nothing. So it depends what, what you're looking for, but you know, don't think that all the beaches are the same and don't just go to a beach that just happens to be the one that's at the end of your, your chosen route because you'll have a completely different experience depending on which, uh, which beach you go to. If you like what we've talked about today, please like and subscribe below. One thing I would recommend, I've got another video in this series called 10 Don'ts. And so that should go hand in hand with watching this one because now I've told you all the things you should do and the other one tells you all the things you shouldn't do. Thanks. Thanks.